love have in our lives. I mean, we make decisions based on romantic love that are often wrong. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think wisdom really needs to play a strong well. Yeah, part this borders this borderlines another pasture of thought and that is the arranged marriage. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I remember talking about it in the 1990s, but very religious people believe in arranged marriages. They say the chance for success is higher than in the random romantic uh, arena. What would you What would you say to that? Um, actually, you know, if, if, you, if you, I guess if you look at it logically, in an arranged marriage, there, there still is this choice, even if the, you know, one party or other does not have a choice to belong to this person. There is a choice to say, I am going to love this man or this woman it's where this love blossoms and grows. And it's interesting you should say that because I once challenged a very religious uh, man about this issue of arranged marriage. You know, know what their belief is? They say that you can learn to live someone. You can learn to love someone you're living with. Hmm. I, I would agree. I mean, I necessarily agree with arranged marriage, but I, I think that that... No, well, they, they, they practice it, these people, and they said... We learn to love the person that we are arranged to marry. That we are arranged to marry. It's astounding, isn't it? I mean, astounding to Americans who believe in free will when it comes to romance. And uh, you know, I don't know who's right or wrong on that one, but that's their belief system. Okay. All right, that's an interesting uh, call, and I, I think these are questions that are not talked about enough, frankly. And I, I think that in addition to the breaking news, which we're going to play on the show uh, throughout this hour. Uh, my main questions are, uh, is God real? How do you know? What is romantic love? Is it real or self-delusion? And what is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you regret, that you wish you could undo? We've also covered how do you fight the pressure without medication. It's a topic I know an awful lot about because I've dealt with it my whole life, my, my whole adult life. It's what probably uh, propelled me into the field of human nutrition, propelled me to get higher degrees and research in the area of vitamins and nutrients, which I've studied, I had studied for so many years and I still do. It's kind of easy to keep up with the field because uh, with the internet today, you don't have to go to a, a medical library. I remember in the early days, I would have to get in a car, drive to San Francisco, park the car in a garage, walk up to the UC Medical Center Library and spend hours in the library going through medical journals. Well, because of the internet, I don't have to do that anymore. I can read the Journal of Neurology in my house. And if I have any questions, I call a neurologist who, who can explain it to me. But what I'm saying is the internet is one of the greatest tools that, that was ever invented. You know, if you use it for knowledge, it's phenomenal. Unfortunately, if you're only reading tabloids, what are you gaining? Well, you're gaining titillation, but you're not gaining an awful lot of knowledge. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So everyone believes life will be a dream if they meet the right person, and for many people it's true, but for most people it's a cynical, it is a cynical ending. Here are the headlines we've talked about thus far. Obama moves to close the last United States uranium plant. How's that for a great war leader? How is that for a commander in chief? This is at the same time he gave Iran the ability to, uh, let us say, use uranium. Putin warns Israel about targeting Iranian targets in Syria on the Golan Heights or near the Golan Heights. Birth tourism is booming in California, the Chinese predominantly are coming over here to give birth and uh, create an instant citizenship for themselves. Muslim father admits strangling his daughter because she stole condoms. Because of Obama, Putin is now the most influential leader, almost everyone is saying that, who has a brain. Then we went on to the lifestyle questions. How do you fight the pressure without drugs? Is romantic love a delusion? What is the biggest mistake you've made in your life? And we're going to go to the callers. The biggest regret, B.O.B. Robert, what's your biggest regret? In uh, 1979, uh, I got into my ex-girlfriend's car. Um, we argued. I got out. She ran me over. Lost my leg. Um, after that, heavy depression, drugs, alcohol. After that, on Christmas of 84, God came to me, said... I cannot help you unless you help yourself. Went back to school, met my wife, six kids later, 12 grandchildren, and there we go. 
That's a heck of a statement you just made, and it's hard to uh, to take it all in at once. So your biggest mistake was getting in your girlfriend's car, and then the rest of your narrative seems to follow from there, leading us to believe that the religious people are right when they say that or, or God, God and the devil exist on the same sphere. Oh, yeah. So I got in the car. No, but you hear what I'm just saying, meaning that had you not had that tragic occurrence, you wouldn't have been set on the road that led you to all of these great events in your life. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't call it a blessing, but it changed my life, and I didn't quit. By the way, whatever whatever happened to the girlfriend who ran you over? Um, she's in another state. She work Is she working for Hillary Clinton's campaign, or...? I don't know. <laughs> is she running Planned Parenthood somewhere that we don't know about? Instead of running you over, is she just uh, selling baby body parts? Well, we don't know what she's doing. All right, it's an interesting story, and there's tragedy, and there's uh, success in the same conversation. Here's one, KSFO. Dane, you have a regret. What is it? What's your biggest regret? Taking my mom to a retirement center without her knowledge. When I got there, she wouldn't get out of the car, and I unleashed a most verbal, uh, disgusting... Uh, rant on her that I never forgave myself for to say to her, and uh, I just never... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hold. Let me back up, Dane. You took your mother to a nursing home, and the day you were doing it, you cursed her out? Well, when I, uh, she, didn't know, she didn't know she was going there, and I took her in my car, and when I got there, she wouldn't get out of the car. And I got so frustrated and mad with her, I uh, unleashed such a verbal rant on her that uh, to this day I'm ashamed of what I said to her. Oh, oh so you're looking back and, and you hate yourself for having done, said that to your mother. Oh, it, it, it pains me till today. Well, that's the thing. Most of us wish we could take back words that came out of our mouth at some point, and we can't. There are, there are hurting words that stay out there like, like, uh, like poisoned arrows. You can't take them back. You cannot take them back. I assume this was a long time ago, and she's since passed away. Yes, um, I did. And you and you and you never had a chance to make up with her and apologize while she was alive. Called her. I called her from Hawaii and, and asked her for forgiveness. She gave it to me. And she passed away a month later. Yeah, but it's still you. You're ripped up over it. I mean, your guts are still torn over it, right? Yeah, it's it was it was a thing I should have never done. Well, but you can't help what you did then. Can you change the past by feeling bad about it? You can't. What can you do? It's like a child who's been hurt as a child. How long can he go on thinking about the past until eventually he has to live in the present? He's got to forget the injuries of the past. And I think you have to forget the, the, the injury that you caused in the past. It's the same thing. In other words, if a child was molested, let's say, by someone as a child, of course it's damaged the child for life. But you have to leave the past in the past and live in the present or you're going to be forever inhibited in every which way in your life, as we all know. But it go, in the same way it goes for something we may have said years ago. What can you do about it? You, you, may, you have to make peace with it somehow, Dane. You apologized to your mother. She didn't accept it. You're sorry that you were such an idiot and said those things. And you feel like you've cursed yourself for the rest of your life. Well, you haven't. It happened. You're a human being. You freaked out. Let it go. I mean, you know, what are you going to do about it? Well, it's one of the reasons I listen to you, uh, Dr. Savage, because you're a, uh, uh, a wise man and a soul. Is I'm a realist. I'm a realist. I made one mistake after another. I make them every day. I try not to. And what can I do? I have to get up the next day and start again. Each day is the sun. You know, the sun also rises. You have a fresh slate. Try to make the next day better than the day before. It sounds like a homily, but truthfully, it's all we've got is the next day. And the sun also rises. You can't live cursing yourself for something you said or did in the past. Or else you're finished. It's too big a burden. Dane, I hope I've helped you by letting you talk about it. We'll come back to more of these lifestyle questions and all the breaking news right here on The Savage Nation. You know, this issue of Planned Parenthood, we know that the tapes are real. A forensic uh, uh, video expert analyzed the tapes. And although Nancy Pelosi said she has not seen them, she knows they're fake and they should be arrested. She's absolutely wrong and a liar. We know that. But the fact is... Let's talk about abortion for one minute. And let's talk about which ethnic group has more babies aborted. It's a, it's a very, very sensitive topic. 
black people comprise only 13% of the population of America, but account for 37% of all abortions. 69% of pregnancies among blacks are unintended, while that number is 54% among Hispanics and 40% of pregnancies among whites. Now, uh, Planned Parenthood, which is the largest seller of abortions in the United States, has located 80% of its abortion clinics in minority neighborhoods. What does that tell you? Why are minority activists, the big mouths like Al Sharpton, who had shooting his foul, filthy mouth off about police causing riots in cities to burn, why doesn't that loudmouth say one word about Planned Parenthood setting up shop in minority neighborhoods because he's part of the same machine? Abortions by race. White, 34%. Black, 37%. Hispanic, 22%. Other, 8%. End of story. The day of black activists goes and marches with those opposed to Planned Parenthood is the day I'll take any of them seriously. The day Black Lives Matter sets up shop outside Planned Parenthood and says get out of our neighborhoods is the day I'll agree any one of those radical troublemakers really is in it for anyone but themselves. End of story. My, my, my opinion. Now let's go back to regular unprogramming. KBOI Radio. KBOI. What a signal that is. Michelle... Thank you for being with us on the Savage Nation. What's your biggest regret? Hi, Michael. First of all, I don't know how I, I made it all these years without listening to you. I became a faithful listener last year. Anyway, Thank you. Well, obviously you made it till then, so you could do without me if I... So what's on your mind? Um, I was caregiver for my elderly father, um, and he was... I'm in another state. I'm in Idaho, and he was from Arizona, and... He became very ill here, and I, he wanted to go home. He wanted to go home. He kept begging me, take him home. Please don't let him die here. Um, he wanted to be in his house, in his chair, listen to his records. And I kept saying, well, we'll give it a couple more weeks, and, and then, you know, I can, I can give my notice. And um, he took a fall on the ice and wound up in the hospital and then was diagnosed with pneumonia and was dead within a week. So I feel as though I'll have guilt. But wait, but what is your regret? What did you do or not do? I don't follow you. Take him home like he wanted. He didn't die in his home. He didn't die home. He died out of state. In a well, wait, 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 back up for a minute. Where was he out of state? Where was he? He was in a nursing home? No, 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 no. I was his caregiver. He was in my house in Idaho. And, and what is it that you regret that you didn't do? You were you're already devoting your life to taking care of your father, so what more could you have done? I didn't take him home to Arizona so that he could be at home when he died. All right, fine. What were you doing that you couldn't take him home? Tell me what you had to do instead. I was working, and I was... Thank you. You just, you just absolved yourself of all, of all sin. D don't you understand how good a person you are? You're the person who should least be guilty for what uh, your father didn't have in his last days. You were giving him everything. You were working. You were taking care of him. He was living with you. He, you could not... See, in other words, if you, le if you gave up your living to take him to, to Arizona... That would have affected him more negatively. Obviously, you're not a wealthy person. You needed every penny you were making, right? Just about, yes, sir. So I think you need to absolve yourself of any guilt whatsoever. You're one of the finest people I've ever had the pleasure of speaking with on the air. How many people would, would, would take parents in today at all? Very few, unless they're, uh, um, let's say, immigrants. The immigrants still take care of their parents to a certain extent, and I mean new immigrants, but... The older immigrants don't. They turn them over to a state care facility. You didn't do that. No, never. Before my so I hope I... you understand what a good person you really are and that you have no guilt. In my opinion, in my opinion, you have no guilt. And I thank you for calling me. I, you know, my mother passed away. She was living in a, in a care facility. You know, well, I don't know what she wanted other than that, but she had to go there because no one could take care of her. She was very unhappy about it. Most people don't want to go to those places. And it wasn't a state-run one. It was private. It, it cost a lot of money. And the fact is is that uh, she passed away eventually because people get old and die. 
And uh, not everyone has the pleasure of living to uh, 